Heaven at the edge of the world. Samantha Greenbrier, grade two. Oh, baby Sam. Story, the turtle people. It's covered with turtle stickers. Captain Allegra looked off at the ocean. It went on forever, or so it seemed. Someday she would find the edge and get to the paradise there. Then she heard a cannon fire. Boom! It was the black pirate ship. She yelled, I thought we lost them at Horse Island. The first mate said, Looks like you thought too soon. The black ship came up along the side. Captain Black himself came out. On the deck of the black ship, he yelled to Captain Allegra, You're never gonna find the edge. There ain't no paradise, and your father were a liar. Captain Allegra then yelled back, Then why do you keep following us, you imbecile? The first mate yelled out, We'll stop you, Captain Black. We'll find the edge of the world, and you'll see her father was no liar. The battle kept going until Captain Allegra's ship got away. Now west, she said, and the ship sailed towards the sunset. Wow, so not only a, a very well-written story for a, uh, for a second grader, also brilliant stickers, if I do say so myself, but also a very thematically interesting story. Maybe she was... Curse that thunder! Dang thunder. Okay, let's get out of here. Just gonna step out of the closet now. But thematically interesting, it seems like she's kind of working through a lot of her frustrations through writing. Something about her family not going the, well, the way that she wants it to, and... It's... Jifk. Just frickin' kidding! Blade Runner. The coroner's cut. Director's cut. That would make a lot more sense. And Beetlejuice and Robocop! This is the best VHS collection ever. Good work, everyone! High fives all around. Oh, it's Mike again. Oh, this is the other book, The Accidental Savior. So this one, a, a hero accidentally saves the president's life by going back in time or something? That one sounds exciting. I can understand how the second book did not turn out as well as hoping. Oh my gosh, so how f we're only like two rooms, three rooms into this place. <laughs> this is a little bit ridiculous for me. <laughs> ah, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, conversation conservation department probably have a lot of conversations in the conservation department so we must be in the forest a little ways if we have to have burn procedures and stuff even in the small forest towns I've lived in I've never seen much like that coupons cutting some coupons Mm. Where's the light? Light! Whew. Hello? Light? Mm. There we go. Much better. Oh, wow. So this is the collection of vinyls or something? They're either vinyls or magazines. I can't totally tell, but... By the colors, I'd have to say vinyls. Oh, look! It's another... It's another wallpaper that I'm not going to judge. It's of the time. It's of the time. Oh, these paisley chairs. The reproductive system worksheet number six. Okay, so we've got stories that are in diff the wrong orders. Make sure the last sentence is a good concluding statement. The menstrual cycle... Okay, so we've got reproductive systems from male and female angles, or no, just just female. Huh. This is this is too difficult. I I cannot accomplish this worksheet. How'd she do? Samantha Greenbrier, period four, health class. 
<laughs> Reproductive cycle works at six. The menstrual cycle, a novella. Oh no, she turned it into another one of her writings. <laughs> oh no. All right, we have to do this. The early morning of September 1st, 1939. Essa Glatz stares out the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Violin in Poland. As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Borislav, the boy she is engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop. Essa's train approaches its destination. Her heart races. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft. As Essa steps off the train, her eyes dart quickly across the gathered crowd. Then, there, her dear Boris, still in the baker's smock. He must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come to meet her. Her heart skips a beat. The ovary releases the ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. Over the wheezing of the steam engines, a deep hum grows. It's coming from the sky. Dark shadows pass over the station, a whistling sound. Essa, her thoughts only a second faster than the bombs, reaches out toward her dear Ben, uh, her dear Boris across the crowd. Their eyes lock, and the moment freezes. The flash and smoke envelops him almost instantly. In the assault by German forces, almost 75% of the people in her hometown are killed. The rest, including Essa, and for a time, Borislav, huddled in a half-destroyed church. He is blind, his legs are missing, bandaged with torn bedsheets. Essa's egg will not be meeting a sperm. It dissolves. About two weeks later, Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given up her rations to keep Boris alive, but in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and saboteur. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries, and the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. See me. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good, supportive kind of see me. But this is such a layered story. We have we have this this story of survival, and it like repeats itself at the very end when Essa gets to she she changes her life into in a whole other form coming back from such a terrible disaster or what seems like a disaster but then eventually gives her new life and then that also reciprocates in this narrative of the menstrual cycle <laughs> this is amazing <laughs> this is award award winning woo see me after class fine she is just, just as imaginative as her father. Ooh, like me some Dr. Jitters. Oh, let's look it in the light. World history. The world is a big place. We put it in a tiny book just for you. <laughs> nope, I didn't mean to, okay. Got a Need for You by Adrian Rolini. Continue! Oh wow, we got a classy little bar in here. So this is a listening room. I've actually never really seen anything like this. But this makes total sense for what we're doing. Ah, Vixa. Vixa Vodka. Oops. Can't get you off my mind. What am I going to do? Oh, Daddy, I didn't know you were. Oh, no. Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow up to The Accidental Pariah. Oh, The Accidental Savior didn't sell well either. Oh. Apparently, Mercury Books is uh, not going to publish him. Well, that explains why it's in the behind the bar. Shame. Pulling strings. Letters in pockets. These are good things. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Oh, this is Mary Schultz shoots. Thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape, and I gave him my permission. He needs to spend less time with those games anyway. No hurry returning it. 
Let Samantha know that the that she is welcome back to our home to visit any time. Sincerely, Mary Shoot. So this must be Danny's mom. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always Aww. have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Well, she's kind of using Danny, but... She doesn't... She does acknowledge that there's meaning to the friendship there. Sorry about the stuff that's missing. Sam, what are you doing with mom and dad's stuff? Oh, we're rolling this. Mm. Three. Oh, doubles. Another pack of coupons. I'm just going to turn all of the lights on in case anything terrible happens. Nothing here. More film reels, more checkbooks. A lot of checkbooks around this area. A note! Hey, Lonnie! So if you want to come over to my house still this afternoon, that'd be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Write back and leave this in my locker if you still want to... If you still want to, and we can meet up in the parking lot after 6th. Santa. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there, I'm going to kick your butt. This is me, and that's your. This is your head, feeling the hot sweats of my uh, my Hadoken blasters. So you know what they say Deal with it. Best light plans of mice and men. Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Ah, Lonnie is a bad influence. Smoking and video games? This cannot be real. My daughter. Actually, I'll leave that door open. That way I know. This Lonnie person has to go. There's, she's no good. Giving her this devil's rock and roll music. Next, she's going to come home with all sorts of boys. And they're probably going to... I don't even want to think about it. Nope. Check that door. Ooh, it opens both ways. Clever door. The door is smarter than I am, that's for sure. Oh, but Lonnie's, uh... Sam is making friends. By playing video games. Have a doggone cool 17th birthday. Happy birthday, Sam. Uncle Harvey? This is kind of weird. Why is it behind the cabinet? So if that was the 17th birthday, and... Uncle Harvey must have passed away almost two, three years ago, does that mean she's... That doesn't make sense. Mm. That's a weird card. Directions to work from new house. Okay, so there's Arbor Hill. We get on Grab Tree. And there's Flintlock. Travel time, one hour and ten minutes. And that's a... I guess that doesn't make sense in some way. Huh. Why would it take an hour and ten minutes to get from work? Or get to work from home? Sketchy, sketchy. Well, there's one wing of the house. Still have uh, whatever's upstairs, but I don't want to deal with attic stuff yet. Because they told me not to. So we went left, now we can go right. We haven't seen Janice's room. Oh, she's forestry services. That makes sense. It's a great place to do that. Anything? Nothing behind the door? There we go. Board game. Over the Alps. A novel traveling game. Woo! 
Let's not lose the pieces. Making a big mess. Spooky lightning. You know, maybe they'll just come home. Maybe they'll just be like, they, you know, went to get midnight pizza or something. People do that, right? 2 a.m. pizza? They were like, man, family's really hungry at 2 a.m. Our daughter's gonna be home any time, and then maybe they just, you know, got held up ordering pizza. Dear Jan, it's so good to hear from you again. All this new house business sounds like quite the adventure. Remember the little dorm room we had? We shared freshman year, and we were miserable fantasizing about our dream homes. I always said I wanted a mansion. You said you just wanted a house in the woods. Look who got both! I hate you. Somebody up there likes you. I could use some, somebody literally up there likes you. I get what they mean by that. Maybe I don't. Maybe there's someone actually in the attic. <sighs> I could use some of that magic. Send me some lotto numbers. I'll play them seriously. But I shouldn't be complaining about this good old split split level we've had since Bob got transferred to Winnipeg. We just got new vinyl siding. Jealous yet? Let me know if you're over and want to trade places. So, how are the girls doing? Has Katie left on her big European adventure yet? Speaking of jealous, right back soon. I miss you, Rumi. This is why we don't talk to Carol. She gets really obsessive. Can't handle it right now. It's too much stress on me. I have to manage the entire forest. I can't deal with Carol right now. Oh. I was going to get all up in that wing. Ooh. Hecho in Mexico. Hey, the little sugar skull. How cute. Oh my gosh, I am a long jumper. I'm a long jump winner. Check me out. How come I can't jump in this game then? That's the real question. Yeah, yeah, other people can have some some place too, but I, I did the entire relay myself pretty much. Let's be real. Yeah, who's got a uh, who's got all these trophies on the wall? That's right, I do. What are the rest of you families people doing? Nothing. 